Hello there, everybody. Welcome, welcome. My name's Chef Dylan. I work with Sticky Fingers Cooking School. Today, we're gonna be working on a Coco Loco Berry Buckle Cake. So before we jump into that, a little bit about me and Sticky Fingers. Like I said, my name's Chef Dylan. Um, I've been with Sticky Fingers for about six years now. We're uh, in-person and online cooking school. We've reached about 62,000 kids and counting. And today we're gonna make some amazing cake in your kitchen. So I'm gonna give everyone some time to get out all of the ingredients if you'd like to follow along with me. Um, first, you will need some frozen berries. Any berry will do. I chose cherries for today. Any kind of berry, frozen berries. You'll need butter, some butter. You'll need milk and yogurt, milk and yogurt, some dairy for a cake. You will need sugar and cocoa powder, chocolate chips, baking powder, and salt. All right, and if you missed any of that, I'll go through it again um, after I'm done talking for a little bit here. So a little bit more about Sticky Fingers. Um, since March, uh, we've uh, converted pretty much to online and uh, everyone can cook from the comfort of their homes with Sticky Fingers now. We've cooked in uh, tons and tons of different states here in the US. We've taught in Germany, Thailand, Eight, lots of different um, countries as well. So kind of awesome that we've been getting to reach so many different people with our over 800 different recipes that we've created since 2012. So if you missed any of those ingredients, I'll go back through them in just a moment here. But like I said, we're gonna make a Coco Loco Berry Buckle Cake today. Now what is that? Here's what it looks like when it's all said and done. You'll have a delicious berry filled chocolate cake in a mug. All right, so just like any class would go, the first thing you do is gather all of your equipment. First thing you'll need today is a mug. We need to cook our cake in a mug. A lot of recipes for sticky fingers since converting to online classes have been uh, cooked in the microwave. We do lots and lots of crazy things in the microwave. We cook cakes, curries, streusels, pies, anything you can imagine, we can make it in a microwave too. Um, and obviously, that makes it a lot easier and convenient. First thing you'll do, take a tablespoon of butter. You'll need to melt that in your mug. So, tablespoon of butter, melt it in your mug. I already melted mine ahead of time to save myself a little time. So melt your butter in your mug, and then take a brush and spread it all around the inside of your mug. This way our cake doesn't get eaten by our mug and we get to eat all of the cake. I hate it when my cake sticks to my pan or my mug and then I don't get to actually eat it. So make sure your butter is coated in your mug. Next, you'll add two tablespoons of white sugar. All right, two tablespoons of white sugar. Whenever you combine sugar and butter when you're making a cake, that is the creaming part of making a recipe. Um, it's super important to get these two ingredients mixed together well. So since we're cooking in a mug today, you can just get out a normal, regular old spoon, mix the sh two tablespoons of sugar with your one tablespoon of melted butter. All right, while you're doing that, maybe count to 10 or so in your head. You really wanna make sure everything is stirred together well and take your time doing that step. All right, once you're done, give your spoon a couple taps, get all that butter and sugar off your spoon. Perfect. Now, might seem a little weird, but give it a smell. See if it smells like anything. When you're baking, it's so fun to smell all of your ingredients as you're going. Smells and baking and food in general are super linked. So when you smell an ingredient, your brain says, oh my gosh, I wanna eat that, and sends messages to your brain and it links memories to smells. So every ingredient that you add to your cup, smell it as you go. When I smell butter and sugar combining, I think sugar cookies. Immediately think of sugar cookies. 
Next, we're gonna add our dairy next. All right, you will need two tablespoons of yogurt. We like to use Greek yogurt. It's nice and thick, full fat, good for making cakes because it actually has a little bit of probiotic to help our uh, cake rise a little bit. I'll talk more about that later though. So add your two tablespoons of yogurt. Helps if you have a rubber spatula to do a lot of your scraping too. And then a quarter cup of milk. Quarter cup of milk. All of these things are just gonna get poured into our mug. All of our wet ingredients will get poured right into our mug. Give it another 10 stirs. 10 stirs. The yogurt and the milk might not make it smell too different, but coming up soon, we'll have some that really smell good. All right, so far you should have butter, sugar, milk, and yogurt in your mug. Get those all stirred together, and you've got all your wet ingredients mixed up. So next, we're gonna work on all the dry stuff, all the powders that make our batter thick and rise. So, um, once you have your liquids all mixed into your cup for your Coco Loco Berry Buckle Cake, I love saying that. You're gonna hear me say it a thousand times today. We're gonna get our flour and our baking soda ready. All right, you'll need a quarter cup of flour and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder in your mug. I'll say that a bunch of times too in case you missed it. The baking powder is the most important part. It's the scientific powerhouse of making a cake. All right? Um, so when you put in your baking powder, it's going to start creating carbon dioxide bubbles that re are reacting with all of your foods. So as you're stirring in your, your baking powder, look for bubbles. Those bubbles get trapped inside of cake batter and make it kind of inflate like a hot air balloon as it heats up in our microwave later. All right, so in case you missed it, so far we have one tablespoon of melted butter, two tablespoons of yogurt, two tablespoons of sugar, a quarter cup of milk, a quarter cup of flour, and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And now we're stirring it all together and looking for bubbles as we go. As you're stirring together, you should see it's starting to form a thick batter now. Flour will do that when it touches liquids. It likes to thicken things up. Now, we've got most of the batter there assembled. Now we need to think about flavors. I said Coco Loco, so it's time to get chocolatey. We're going to add four teaspoons of your favorite kind of cocoa powder. I like to add dark chocolate because that's my favorite kind. It's a little healthier, so I can tell myself I can eat more of it too. So stir in four teaspoons of your favorite kind of cocoa powder. I wouldn't recommend tasting it. Any kid chefs in the, in the house, I wouldn't recommend tasting it. It's kind of bitter, not like the chocolate you're familiar with. Mix that in and watch your batter change from white to totally amazingly brown and chocolatey. Now it's Coco Loco because we're doubling up on the chocolate today. So go ahead and get a handful of chocolate chips out. Hi there, Chef Josh. I remember you. <laughs> Good to have you. So we've got our chocolate chips here, just a handful, and then an extra handful to snack on too because anytime you take out chocolate chips in the kitchen, it's always good to do a little quality control test and make sure that they're, they're tasting good. So take a little chocolate chip taste while you stir those in. All right, we're almost done. We've actually almost got all of our ingredients already mixed into our cup here. Next, you'll need a pinch of salt. I always thought that was kind of weird. Add a pinch of salt to your cake. We don't want salty cake, but we want our cake to have flavor. So after you take a actual pinch of salt and add that into your mug, stir it in. All right, smell your new concoction. Oh, mine went from smelling like a sugar cookie to smelling like a chocolate cake. Loving it. Here's what mine's looking like, everyone. Nice and thick and goopy. We have one more super important ingredient to add today. It's our last one. It's our frozen fruit. 
you'll want roughly a quarter cup of your frozen berries. And we're going to just place them on the top of our cake batter and smush them down onto the top. So I'm gonna take my, my quarter cup of frozen cherries here, about six cherries, juices and all, and just kinda pat those down onto the top. Smush them a little bit. All right, if you have big fruits like strawberries or something like that, um, make sure you cut those recipes up into smaller pieces. All right, so now here's what mine's looking like. I've got my cherries sitting there on the top, my super creamy chocolatey batter uh, sitting on the bottom of my mug, all ready to go. What's awesome about this cake and why it's one of my favorites is because I'm kind of a, I'm kind of bad in the kitchen sometimes. I like to eat cookie dough sometimes and I like to taste my cake batter. I know, shame on me, I shouldn't be doing that. But this one doesn't have any egg in it. So if you would like to, you can taste it and see, is it chocolatey enough? Is it sweet enough? Does it have all the flavors that you were imagining your chocolate cake in a mug would have? All right. So go ahead, if you would like to, you can give it a little taste. It's safe, there's no egg in it. When you're ready, you'll need one sheet of paper towel. We're going to fold this in half, the origami portion of class. You get it a little wet, and this will become our lid. All right, use your, your paper towel like a lid over the top of your mug so that none of the cake explodes out when it's inflating like a hot air balloon, like I said, from that baking powder. We don't want it to rise straight out of the cup and onto the top of your microwave. That would be no bueno. <laughs> so once yours is ready, you've got your lid on here. You've got your one tablespoon of butter, two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of yogurt, a quarter cup of milk, a quarter cup of flour, quarter teaspoon of baking powder, four teaspoons of cocoa powder, pinch of salt, chocolate chips, and frozen berries, then you are ready to start cooking. All right, so now it's time to cook this. It's sort of miraculous. If you've ever cooked a cake, you know that in the oven, it takes like 30 to 40 minutes to cook a cake. That's too long for me. I'm ready for a cake now. So in the next two minutes, you will have a cake. Put your uh, microwave safe mug in the microwave. Cook it for two minutes. And this is kind of a cool part. You can watch your paper towel will rise up as the cake is inflating and rising from that baking soda. So you can kind of watch and see what happens. Now do note, once the cake is done, needs to cool for a few seconds because it will be screaming hot. So don't get too excited and grab it right away. All right. And after your cake comes out, we'll need to test it. All right, so two minutes in the microwave. Two minutes in the microwave. And now like a, a cooking show magic, I've got my cake already done. Two minutes, just like that. Just kidding. So here's my cake. Here's what yours should look like when it's all said and done. Here's how you test it too. I'm gonna take out my butter knife. So while you're cooking yours in the microwave, you can get your butter knife out and you'll just give it a good test. Slide your knife in, pull the knife out, and it should come out with cake crumbs on it, not raw cake batter. All right, at that point, you can get ready to eat your cake. I always like to have a little sauce to go with my cake. If you uh, go to stickyfingerscooking.com and look up this recipe for the Coco Loco Berry Buckle Cake, um, a little soft serve ice cream recipe is included with it, which goes perfectly with this recipe. A little dollop of cream on top melts over it and makes a beautiful sauce on top of your cake. I actually have a little bit here. It's very drizzly and wonderful. All right, here's my Coco Loco Berry Buckle Cake. I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope that it's sometime in the future I can see you guys in a class. Uh, we have a lot of upcoming amazing classes coming up online and in person over the summertime, but some of the online offerings coming up, we've got Breads 201, Pasta 101, and 201 for a little bit more of the advanced uh, students. And then if you're still a beginner and you're looking to do some more of our microwave classes, you should look for Kids in the Kitchen 
on our website and see if there's any classes that you'd love to, to join me on. All right, hopefully I see you guys in the kitchen soon. And with that being said, bon appetit, eat and enjoy, and I hope I'll see you guys in the future. Bye everyone.